Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? Jeff Mosher, Adam Kaplan, Inside the Birds. Can you feel the intensity ratcheting up? Because <laughs> in not too long from now, a couple more days, the Eagles four days. are going to be playing. Four days. The Eagles are going to be playing a playoff game in Tampa against the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. And it's hard to believe with all the content that we're trying to provide, Adam, that at the time that this podcast drops, which is Wednesday, 6 a.m., right? The Eagles still haven't really convened yet to start practicing later uh, today for, for Tampa yeah. Bay. That'll happen yeah. later today. So yeah. for the yeah. purposes of this podcast, it's not like we have injury updates or at least practice updates. Where we actually, we do. We, we actually we have, have updates. injury updates, but I mean, yeah. what I mean is we don't, we don't have the official, this guy was at practice. This guy oh, was and well, right. Practice right. That'll be it Friday where, where we'll have for both teams, by the way, because we don't usually do it this comprehensive, but we're going to for Friday. Friday show is going to be awesome. Yeah, uh, I already got them. I got some unique statistical information that's pretty much not out there, so I'm I'm holding until Friday, because uh, we're going to just have to help preview the game. We're gonna we're gonna preview this this game like we've never done before in the four years we've done this because we it's all we're gonna do on Friday. Injuries, transactions. There won't be a lot of them um, because all the guys came off COVID. We'll we'll explain uh, what happened on Monday. It's comical, um, but uh, yeah, they had some injuries, unfortunately. You know, from the uh, I call it the preseason game week eighteen, which it really was. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, they had some transactions. We'll get into that. But yeah, Friday show will be fun. This one's gonna be fun today. Uh, tonight, mm -hmm. we actually got I got some tape stuff from uh, a couple of people who saw the tape of the Cowboys game. But we're not spending an hour on it. We're not. It'll be brief, but we'll give you a little bit of breakdown on that. But like you said, we have a playoff game. Was never expecting this. This is just been an amazing season of. Um, of Eagles football, where you never expected, especially when they were two and five, two and five. I mean, uh, it's funny. We we remember when we looked at the schedule, we're like, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe they'll come. Close. Maybe they're not going to make the plus, but maybe they could turn it around and make it the record respectable. Right. But I just didn't expect them to have be over five hundred. And uh, this is this is cool. This is cool. Yeah, no, it's definitely cool. And and uh, along those lines, I think our pregame show on Sunday with Greg Cosell and Jason Avant will be really awesome. It'll be the first oh, oh yeah. Oh Inside yeah. the Birds pregame live playoff version. That's right. That's we right. started the, the show last year, and, of course, that was a, a disaster of a year. So it's cool <laughs> to do a playoff version of the show. So, And, again, as we, we we mentioned before, we're overjoyed that it stays in its normal slot 10 a.m. till noon oh, on amazing. Sunday leading up to the game, which should be exciting. Uh, I got to tell you, you inspired me. You don't even realize it. But, uh, oh, no. You gave me some inspiration this week. Okay, um, okay. Because I, we've, I've asked you about tennis, and you play tennis a lot. And you yeah. Play in the morning, and I asked you recently, and we talked about it on the podcast, you know, what is your threshold for temperature that you're willing to play oh, tennis no. in? No, right? no, you did Do you remember what you said? What, what did you tell well, me? Well, mine's in the 20s. I, I played in the 20s last year, and that it just got to be ridiculous. Like, first of all, the ball does not carry well. It's, right. like, a, it's like a shot put. In, in, in the cold weather, so I made a decision. I'm not doing that anymore. So yeah. anyway, why? What did you do? I said you were crazy. I said who would play yeah. tennis in the 20s, but you did, even in the 30s. I wouldn't play the the most I've ever done. Like take golf. I won't play golf in anything under 55. If you want to call me a wuss, that's fine. But I'm not playing golf because <laughs> it hurts your hand when you hit the ball. It does. Like 45, yeah. especially if there's a little bit of a wind. And on a golf course, there's always a wind whipping around. So but sure. anyway. You inspired me. I've been, you know, running for a year. Uh, you know, I've been trying oh, yeah, to get right. weight down, mm -hmm. lost weight. And I went, I've been running this week, including Tuesday morning. I continue when it was, a, it said 18 degrees and felt like 10. I just, you know, threw the it scarf on, the sweatshirt, uh, it, it, the, the hat and gloves, and I was out there, man. I, I did it. I mean, think of it this way. This sounds ridiculous how cold it got. So on, uh, let me see, Tuesday, I, Played tennis at six thirty, which means I got to get up at five twenty and walk the dog. We have a new, we have a new girl, um, Twiggy. You could follow. Uh, let me see what the heck. My wife's got the, the Twitter. Account. I love that you make Twitter accounts for your dogs. I think I don't. My wife it. does. She she has, does. She, she's yeah. She's great. She's amazing at they. It's crazy when uh, Yogi passed away. We actually got uh, condolence cards. It's <laughs> it's wonderful, but you know, for people to do that. But um, that was nice. Anyway. So getting up at five twenty and then going outside and again, I, cold does not bother me. I could I could be in single digits and, and do anything as long as it's not windy. Mm -hmm. It was windy Tuesday morning. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get it. I can't take this. I forgot to bring out my vest with me. I, I I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So you did. You played tennis on Tuesday morning. 
Right, on Tuesday morning, yeah, but we play indoors. Yeah, we play indoors. Oh, indoors. I thought you played yeah. outdoors. In no, we more. have. Up to two oh, weeks okay. ago, we sure were. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. well, now, last year, outdoors. <laughs> you know, I, I have a lot of friends who do that. Um, you know, right. they, they wear thermals or do, what did you wear to be outside? Yeah, I wore um, a pair, like a long um, legged pair of thermals underneath yeah. my, my, my jogging pants. And then look at you, um, man. <laughs> I, I have this like uh, Under Armour, like long sleeve skin type shirt yeah. and then i wear a sweatshirt on top of that but i put a a scarf around my neck that i tuck into the sweatshirt and then i had the yep, knit smart. hat that covers you know helps keep the um i got weird a, a lot of, some people have this i have this problem um i got like i guess weird oddly shaped ear holes so like <laughs> headphones and airpods like they fall out of my ears as soon and i sweat a lot so those things just fall right out of my ears so it's actually helpful in the cold because i'll put a knit hat over my uh my why i don't i don't run in airpods that would be ridiculous i have these like wireless though um kind of earbuds whatever you want to call them the hat keeps them securely in, in in place it's very helpful but uh i was thinking of you when i was running i'm like i'm running and i wonder if adam be playing tennis outside in this uh he can't like glaciers on my sidewalks <laughs> it's I mean, no it's it's tough um i know Kudos to you and anyone listening who who runs. I, I don't like jogging. I've never liked it. Um, I'd rather be on a treadmill. It's just too boring. I don't know. I need a. I I like tr we have a treadmill which is like twenty years old, but it still works well. But the, the tennis outside lists are some, when we walk in a minute here, people are I'm sure sick and tired of us talking about stuff that's not Eagles. But um, in podcast people they do that. People actually talk about other things in football every um, once in a while. Every once right. In a while. I, By the way, exactly. I hate jogging and running too. I just force myself to do it. Good for you, man. I have no, to have something in my ears, like I, taking I, my attention away. Let, let me ask you this before we move on. And a lot of people yeah. relate to this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would struggle when I first started playing tennis and getting up super early. I was never a morning person. There were some times I, I just, I'm like, you know, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And then mm -hmm. I, I, I said, you know what? Just suffer through it. Get up at 5.20, 5.15. I know you can take a nap later. And I would just psych myself up to do it. I'm like, you know, just do it. Stop being a baby. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, year, uh, two years later, uh, you have 35 pounds le you know, later, it's uh, it was worth the struggle to change. The, you know, it's worth it. The, the health benefits to carry your body, folks. I cannot tell you how much better I feel. Yep. Getting stretched, by the way. I go to the stretch zone. My friends uh, – nice. Yeah, uh, Dave Spadaro told me about it. Kudos to Dave, and uh, feels good. It's, it's it's all an investment. Like what you're doing, I'm doing, and others who are listening. Mm -hmm. I'll never never substitute anything for my health. It, it's so important to feel better as you get older. Yeah, no, I definitely. You know, obviously, doing this venture with you and um, us being in kind of control of what we do has enabled me to be more yep. flexible with the little time that I do have. And I made that same decision last May when it started to get warm that I was going to get in better shape so and start running again. So I do that. I've lost about 20 pounds since May, although the holiday for you, just man. Wow. me back on, awesome. so I'm trying to get back off. But, but um, what, one yeah. thing, well, I do want to ask you one thing, and, and folks, again, can relate to this. How did you feel once you got rolling and on a roll here with the, with the running? Did you Good. feel different mm -hmm. when you started losing weight? Energy yeah, so, so another thing um, – uh, not to bore everybody, but, you know, last year around Christmas time, I never even said it on the pod or and you knew this, but Christmas to New Year time, I had COVID. So yeah. uh, and that's that was the worst one, you know, last year. And um, I had it. And after I was done with it, I still didn't I couldn't taste for quite a while. But um, I was also having really bad heartburn, which I don't ever mm. have. Mm. Um, and then so I went to see the nurse practitioner for my annual yeah. physical and um, I was, I was about, again, I lost 20 pounds. So I was about 20, 15, 20 pounds overweight. And she asked me about my diet and she basically scolded me. <laughs> and I didn't even think I ate that. Been badly, there, done that, man. It's, so it's humiliating. Yeah, yeah, it's humiliating. I, and so I did blood work and some levels were higher than they should have been. So I'm like, that's it. I just got to start. Cholesterol? Doing, doing it. Was your cholesterol? You mean yeah, with, cholesterol your blood glucose? No, it was yeah. cholesterol mostly. Okay. Gotcha. And I tell you, Famous also, man. I had a, um, um, a muscle in my rib i had like i had like an, a tear or a slight slight tear maybe and it was very uncomfortable for me and when i would eat a lot and get full and your stomach would expand it would press up against that tear and oh, it would man. hurt a lot so i was in a decent amount of pain because of it so uh, i was on anti-inflammatories and everything how did this and, happen how did you uh, i have your... no idea i have some i mean it's you know I'm, I'm you know we're older adam sometimes you just 
wear and tear. Pull it. Yeah, no, I just wonder how yeah, you pulled the muscle. That's probably what yeah. happened. Um, there are a couple of – I have a few ideas on some things that I did that it might have caused it, but I don't know for sure. So, But losing the weight there has really helped me because I don't know that the tear is fully re- repaired, but the fact that I'm down 20 and my stomach doesn't press up against – that muscle mm. that has a tear has made me a lot more, um, you, you, you know, pain free throughout the day. Well, great pro tip here. Uh, speak, if this is related to, we, we promise, thirty seconds we'll be out of this. Uh, one thing, and this sounds ridiculous, but you know, you talk about soreness and you you, you pulled a muscle. Mm-hmm. Uh, those of us who used to drive, I, when I would drive to ESPN, the drives were four hours each way. I, I chose not to move there, and, and I, I didn't want to fly. Um, I'd always be, this is one before I got in shape. So I'd be sore a lot. And a friend of mine said, he goes, do, do you, do you drive with your wallet in your pocket? I'm like, yeah, a lot of the times he goes, just take it out, take everything out of your pocket. So I'm like, gosh, yep. you know what? That's so I easy. Do that. Duh. I don't, You're right. I do that too. Makes me yep. feel so much better. It does make you feel, otherwise it's poking you in all in your legs. Right. Your but it and... takes the weight out. I got that George Costanza wallet where the car probably would tip over if I, you know, if I, uh-huh. I didn't take it out. Uh, yep. so anyway. I'll tell you another I'm thing. In the hot well, summer, if you if you're a big like AC's got to be blasting and blasting, and you're and you drive long. Distances, I keep the windows open, man. I like to keep the windows open. Like the first but thing. for those who have the air conditioning on, blasting a lot and yeah. have to drive long yep. distances, you should try not to have those vents um, right blasting you directly in the shoulder yes. or neck yeah. or chest area because it can cause irritation. So that's mm, our that's those a- are our pro tips for the uh, for the for the episode. There you go. Like the football motion, Kaplan. I know. I know. No, hey, I know. Like We're five get people ripped. that comment, like, no, that's really interesting. Please tell me more about your, your muscle. I know, exactly. Gonna, it's funny, though. When and people, then there'll be one, people, one or two guys who'll be like, we like, get ripped. Up. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. It, it, it is what it is. I get it. Yeah, it is. Uh, listen, insidethebirds.com already has some really good uh, content up. Um, you've got your power rankings. I love your number. Uh, I loved your, your power rankings this year, the, the final ones, I guess. Although you'll do more as the playoffs go. Or I don't know. I like, one? I, cause I typically when I would do them years ago, we would not do them for the playoffs cause it's like the, but well now we have 14 teams and not 12, but the, the, the bottom, the, the non-playoff mm-hmm. teams are going to, they're not playing. So you keep them the same. Right. And obviously it's just, you know, you, you, these teams get eliminated and you only have eight left and whatever. So it's kind of hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's a great power rankings. Love it. So make sure you're checking out inside the birds.com, checking them out. Uh, I have some stuff already on, I have a story on, Jonathan Gannon talking about facing Tom Brady yeah, and some that. of the different things that they're going to have to do, some of the different things they've been doing. But one of the things that really stands out, and this is actually relevant, so it's for the podcast, but Brady uh, and the Bucks they lead the NFL in pass plays of 20 or more yards, and they're pretty high up on the 40 or plus yards as well. So they, they, they are really good at explosive plays, Adam, through the air, but at the same time, and almost contradictory, Brady is among the the best at getting the ball out quickly. Normally, when you do oh, that, incredible. when you pepper, yeah. you don't have it. You're you matriculate the ball down the field, as Hank Tram would say. But he's so good that he gets the ball out quickly and gets the ball downfield, or at least gets guys open in space that give them run after the catch to turn a 15 yarder into a 30 yarder. And that's really going to be the biggest issue for this Eagles defense because. You know, you don't think they're going to blitz a whole lot. They're going to have to get a four-man pressure. And even without Antonio Brown, even without Chris Godwin, this guy hangs 41 points up oh. against the Panthers, who have a decent defense. Uh, and he hits Gronkowski seven times. He hits uh, Evans. And then, of course, um, Rashad Perriman is going to be the forgotten yep. guy. That's that's a tough matchup. He's for, back for now, Steven yeah. Nelson. Yeah, he's, he's 6'2", two could run. Actually, yeah. faster than his dad. Uh, Brett, you might remember him from uh, his days with the Lions. And then Prashad also went to the Lions, uh, yep. ironically. Um, yeah, look, he, they take the shot plays. They do a lot of dink and dunk. We'll, we'll get to the, more of the matchups on Friday. But, yeah, it's it's going to be challenging, uh, no question right. about it. Eight different receivers caught passes. So, I mean, there's no slowing down, and, and Jonathan Gannon knows that. And, by the way, Gannon did confirm that uh, – I think we talked about this on the last podcast. I mentioned, you know, Denver would seem like a spot – because Jonathan's first coaching stint happened in Minnesota. And while he was there, George Patton was the uh, uh, assistant Here's general Peyton. manager. Yeah. Peyton. 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 I keep calling Peyton. All right. Peyton was the, uh, I got to think like Gary Peyton, George Peyton was uh, the assistant to Spielman. And now Peyton's the man in Denver. So, so somebody asked us on Twitter, why would Jonathan Gannon get a head coaching interview coming off this year? And I, you know, we, we have to be realistic about the situation. A, he's got a connection to this guy. 
Um, yep. B, he already had a reputation um, for being like kind of a future head coach. And C, yeah. I know Eagles fans, including myself. I mean, we've, we've been critical of him and yourself at many times. But yeah. at the yep. at the end of the day, when the national folks or people look at it from afar, what they see is a guy who in his first year with his team – produce a defense that right now ranks 10th overall in total yards and ninth against the run. It's not yeah. looked uh, as, as a bad defense. And it's also, I think people look at the def Eagles defense and say, it doesn't have a whole lot of playmakers outside of Darius Slay, especially on the back end. So he, I, I think it looks better in the big picture to other people than it does to the Philadelphia fan who watches it on a week to week basis. Very fair. Yeah. I, I, I agree. The only thing I would add before we move on here is that uh, he's a guy that, was put in a tough position because I, I still, I still don't know if, if you looked at the starting eleven, all of them are guys that he really wanted or match what he wants to do. But he's doing the best he can now. He's also taken advantage of a great schedule in the second half. We knew this when the season started that it, they'd eventually get better because if you just look at the quality of the opponent was so bad in the second half, they better improve, and they did in a great way. And we'll we'll see. This matchup is so difficult based on who they're playing, and you outline it very well. Mm -hmm. with Brady's ability to play in that boxing ring, target practice, he just looks, and you've got to gotta get pressure up the middle. But, again, that'll, that, that'll be for Friday's show, and uh, I look forward to talking about that then. All right, Q&A will also drop Thursday morning, 6 a.m., Quentin, Michael, Jason, Avant. And, of course, they're going to talk about their own experiences, uh, their playoff experiences, what it's like to – that first week mm. of practice leading up to a playoff game. So I'm sure they're going to um, have some really amazing stories That's awesome. about awesome. Um, their days as players and what the playoffs – are like uh so make sure you're looking out for them uh as we've been telling you make sure you're using deal dash it's the online shopping platform that's actually fun it's the longest running penny auction and website and app around and uh many of the items that you can get on deal dash are just simply too good to be true we've seen a car sell for 900 dollars, brand new tv for less than two bucks so many wonderful items that you can get electronics you know stuff for your car stuff for your house anything on Deal Dash for mere pennies, as land you can win in the process. So don't be a loser. Stop paying full retail price for things you want and get on Deal Dash. Go to DealDash.com or download the app when you register. Use the promo code ITB for a special offer for some bonus free bids. You know, you, with Deal Dash, you got to be like that dad from a Christmas story who ticked off his wife when he won the leg of la the lamp. You remember mm. that? You've seen a Christmas story, the old movie for. Come on. You've never seen a – I know that you don't celebrate Christmas, oh, but you've never seen right. a Christmas story. We celebrate Chronica in our, our house. Chronica. All right. Well, it's a, the guy wins a dad. It's, it takes place in the 60s. The guy wins a, a leg. It's like a leg with a little fishnet stocking. It's a little seductive looking that has a lamp attached to it. And he puts it up in his window, and he's so proud of it, Adam, because he won it. And his wife is looking at this thing like, you're really not going to put that in our living room window, are you? <laughs> and sure enough, he does. And then later, sh she accidentally breaks it, and he gets mad at her. So, But that's my point with Deal Dash. You win something, you feel proud of it no matter what it is. Very right. cool. The Eagles will feel proud if they can win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'll tell you that, because that would be a heck of an upset. I still think the line last we checked on DraftKings was eight. Um, or did it – was it eight and a half when we talked eight about and it? Eight and a half. Well, I might have dropped from eight and a half to eight, but – yeah, I mean that that could be just because of where the money's going. Because you know how the, the books like to balance it out. That way they don't yeah. they don't get crushed. Yeah, um, no, it's eight I, and a half now. When I check it on DraftKings, okay. still eight and a half. Okay, okay, okay. So um, you want to get to the transactions? Yeah, go to some transactions. Let's do it. Yep. All right. So quickly here, and it's just so funny. The Bengals did the same thing, and we're. we're <laughs> I just find it funny. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make any accusations here, but it's just so funny that all these players. Let's start with it. All these guys came off the COVID list. Jordan Howard, Boston Scott at running back. Dallas Scott, right. Jack Stoll, tight end. Nate Herbert, guard. Fletcher Cox, D the defensive guys. Fletcher Cox, Jernard Avery, and Alex Singleton at linebacker. Avante Maddox at corner. Safeties, Roddy McLeod and Marcus Epps. It's just comical that they all came off at the same time. Right, and somehow uh, Jason Kelsey was able to make it off before right. so I mean, he could play on. in that game. Like, do you think if last week, if it was normal, like two years ago, where last week would have been the first round, you think those guys would have been all missing the game from being on the COVID list? No. Well, <laughs> the, 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 well, the, remember the rules were way different last year, so it's. Well, uh, no, I'm talking about with this year's rules, where you can basically make it back in two days. Oh right? yeah. Oh, it's a. Uh, we we saw we've seen guys make it back the next day. It's just it's and it right. was these were not false positives, so it is what it is. All right, other stuff. Let's move on here. JJ sure. Ortega Whiteside uh, put on IR. Uh, we're told it is a uh, he's going to have surgery on his uh, finger, I think. Mm. Um, 
we know about Tyree Jackson with the ACL. And Brett Toth, unfortunately, who started at center, uh, he tours. Uh, I mean, he, he, I don't know what he did actually. Uh, he has a knee injury, so they're they're done for the playoffs, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, look for the Eagles data receiver off the the practice squad. Do not be surprised if Keyshawn Johnson gets promoted over John Hightower, who shockingly, I see shockingly, I, for the life of me. Well, I think I know why, but I'll explain in a second. But this past game was a perfect example. You got John Hightower some reps. It's got to keep him on the practice squad, protect him, and they don't even call him up or elevate him for a game. It's at, it's like a they treat it like a pure preseason game, and they still don't call him up for that game. Like uh, I, I almost thought they were punishing him, and they were like, you know, like when a dog poops in the house and you rub his nose in it in the poop. To, to, I mean, like you you. Had an opera. You played literally everybody on your roster that day, except John Hightower. I, I, I was, I was like, why did you spend the whole year keeping him on the practice squad? I, I know. Not, if you're not happy enough with him, unless, unless something recently happened, unless like, you know, he was making progress, doing well, and then he had like some kind of setback or did something that really pissed everybody. Off. I don't know. I'm just trying to like, don't know. What, rationalize what? in my head that what, why we would do that. Do not be surprised to see Keyshawn Johnson. Promoted, whatever, however they want to assign him off there, I would think elevated. Because right. they, they, you can't go into a game with, with four receivers. So I uh, don't be surprised if it happens. We, we reported, what, gosh, months ago uh, that uh, Johnson uh, won practice squad player of the week, uh, really good special teams player. This guy's pretty productive in college. Yeah, doesn't run a lot of that fast, but pretty high character kid. We'll see what happens. Right. Uh, other than that, uh, Jason Huntley. Now, this one, this one. It's interesting with Huntley signed. They didn't promote him. They signed him. The reason why I'm, I'm reasonably sure that this way that, um, well, they could they see they could have protected him. They could have protected him. But I know the conspiracy theorist says, well, uh, you got you got Jordan Howard. He'll play, but he's got the shoulder issue. You got, mm-hmm. we don't know about Miles Sanders yet. We'll come back from the broken hand. So maybe this, this, they get him up there. They're not totally sure all four will be available, so he, he's there on standby. This this protects him, them from him being poached from a uh, from an, uh, from another team. But my point is, well, why won't they just protect him and wait till Saturday? I don't know. That, that's I, I'm a little I surprised. I was surprised myself. I agree with yeah. you. And it also yeah. makes me think that um, well, they have to have insurance. You know, I mean, I know that that Nick Sirianni in his press conference on Monday said he expect he was hopeful. And he thinks that all of his running backs will be healthy. Yeah. But obviously the signing of Jason Huntley to the 53 mm, kind of leaves it open the door that yeah. maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they won't and be healthy. And they cut carry on Johnson. And Matt McCrane once again was cut. So we'll see if they bring him back yep. by Saturday to make sure that uh, you know, they, they don't need, you know, they, they have insurance. But yeah, carry on Johnson is, boy, former second round pick of the Lions. And uh, it just he's falling on hard times. And then on Tuesday, uh, they protected four players, Owosika, jo- Jacoby Stevens, mm-hmm. Mac McCain, and Jared Maiden, which is uh, – Owosika did play in the game. Uh, I didn't get any great grades on him, but he got playing time. Jacoby Stevens mm-hmm. is a guy that they want to see converted. The, the, his big deal will be year two when he gets reps in the spring. And then Mac McCain, who's got some ability, and Maiden, who's a good special teams player. So they'll go along with that. And then. Uh, injury wise, we just alluded to it. The, the big one is Sanders. I, I we're gonna we're, we're, we'll know more as, as you said earlier. We'll have we'll have today's practice Wednesday and Thursdays when we talk about Friday. We'll have a much better idea if, if he's practicing. To me, that means he's getting cleared because you you you, can't, you you don't tackle in practice anyway. Right. But the thing is, I, I want to find out which hand it is because I believe he holds. He's a right-handed guy. Uh, uh, you know, he holds it in his right hand, right arm, the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know if it gets clear, that's the teams know this, they're going to go after it. Because all right. you have to do is go through the coaching tape if you're the the uh, Bucks and see uh, where he broke it. And that, that's that's typically how teams find out which ankle it is, you know, if guys got a sprained ankle. Then with that shoulder sprain you reported some weeks ago with Jordan Howard, I just wonder, as we talked about before, he, he – my understanding is the, the, the sprained knee is not an issue. It's now the shoulder sprain. Okay. I just wonder, why was he – but, see, I don't know why he was tentative, though, a couple weeks ago. That that I don't understand. I don't know. 
Was it the well, knee? I, mean, I, I guess know. you'd be tentative if you were bracing for contact on a shoulder might that be. was hurting you. I, yeah, I mean, you're right. I understand what you're saying because the type of runner he is, you're going to get hit. You just you're you're going to get hit whether you're quick to the hole or slow to the hole. Yeah. But it might also be something, and I I don't know. It might be something that's kind of involuntary. You're just not sure of yourself because you're not feeling a hundred percent, and mm -hmm. it may just slow you down and make you less instinctive. I I, I really don't know, but I do know that that injury is difficult uh, for an athlete of that position to play. In fact, Jason Avant talked about it on our pregame yeah. show as a wide receiver. Um, he's dealt with AC in shoulder injuries as well. And it's no picnic because as, as we, I think we reported it when it initially happened, the issue is your pain tolerance and your range of motion. All right. Pain tolerance for everybody is different. But when, again, when you know you're a downhill running back who incurs a lot of contact, it's got to be, a little bit different than if you're mm -hmm. a speedster and you think you can get to the edges all the time. And then your range of motion, you got to hold the ball a certain way. You got to protect it. Sometimes you have to switch hands, right? Depending on if you bounce to the outside or not. And if you can't, sometimes you have to catch the ball. Uh, it might get thrown over your head if you're in the flat and to reach up and grab that, you may be able to do it, but it may hurt you while you do it. So it's just, it's a very difficult injury for a running back to have. Yeah, and what Jason said is it lingers. He goes, AC joint sprains linger. You can play with it, but it gets, you know, it does linger. So right. we'll keep an eye on that. We'll see what happens later today mm -hmm. uh, and Thursday and Friday. Uh, Lane Johnson with the knee, he'll play. You know, he had the, the injury bef uh, before the break, but it was not serious. So he'll be able to play. Now, Landon Dickerson with the thumb. Uh, I remember you said you, you'd seen this during the game. Uh, to, was it the Washington game? It was the Washington yeah, and I didn't know it was a yeah. thumb injury. I could just tell he was – it looked to me like he was wincing yeah. and grimacing and just not mm. comfortable. And then he was out of practice last week. Um, right, you know, he was, right. He was listed as non-participant, did not participate. He's going to play. Yeah. Right, he's going to play. But you do wonder, we'll, we'll see if the reporters notice uh, that it's taped up or whatever, so we'll keep an eye on that. And Nate Herbig had the knee sprain, but the, the, it's not – he's, he's, he's going to be available. But he, he injured his left ankle the last game that he played. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, it didn't look good, but he came back, so he'll be able to play. And then Sean Bradley hurt his shoulder. I don't know if it's the one. He got hurt in this last game, the, the preseason game, as we call it. Uh, right. I don't know if it's related to the car accident he got into, but uh, we'll see. He's a val valuable member of the special team, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Sure, sure. In fact, I think he was – I think Michael Clay was asked about it, and um, he just wasn't sure at the time because it was Tuesday – in his press conference and he just you know was not sure first of all he's got to have to have the conversations with um with who's up and who's not up anyway i mean sean right. bradley's always up when he's healthy but obviously mm -hmm. they have to go check him out and see yep uh, he just said he said we'd like to have sean ready and willing to go we'll take it day by day like anything else so there's really no clarity there on that yep. situation. and then with the bucks um mm -hmm. so they say leonard Fournette will be activated they they, they put him down on uh injury reserve because he had two injuries ankle and the hamstring the hamstring is the issue but mm -hmm. they say he's going to be ready. Ronald Jones had an ankle. He'll be able to go. Gio, Giovanni Bernard, they're hopeful he'll start practicing. You know, he only plays on third down. He's eligible to to, to actually play this week, but um, they'll see if he can practice. Cyril Grayson, they don't know if he's going to be able to play. He started. Mm -hmm. He's been starting on the outside. Uh, they don't know if they're going to have him, but you mentioned earlier, and you're right, Rashad Perriman is the guy who's going to play a lot regardless because yeah. Bruce Aarons really likes him. Now here's the big one, and we're gonna we're gonna give some good stuff on Friday. The the word we heard of Levante David, the big reason why the run defense wasn't just get, against the Jets, they didn't look good against the Panthers, although they won that game. Uh, Levante David not having him has impacted their their run defense. It's the early word that we got. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason Pierre Paul is not the same player he once was. He's got this this rotator cuff. He's playing through it. Jack Barrett with the um, they're calling it AC, MCL and ACL sprains, folks. A sprain equals a tear. Mm. Uh, I've I've reported on these things for 21 years now. Um, a sprain does mean that the fibers are torn or stretched. Right. So exact 100. Any doctor will tell you that. It's the way I mm -hmm. learned it from doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to Dr. David Chow about this. He laughs when people say it's only a sprain. It's, it means it's a tear, but mm -hmm. it, because it's not a full tear and it's something that happened. The, the ACL and MCLs have been impacted for Barrett, but. They believe that the knee is stable enough that he could contribute. They have no idea how much he could play. We'll see what he does in practice this week. Jamel Dean, their nickel corner with the hamstring. They don't know if he'll be available. Richard mm -hmm. Sherman was put on IR on Tuesday, so he's done. 
Uh, he can't come back no matter how far they go because he's this is the second IR for him, so he's done for the season, done for the playoffs. Uh, so they got some injury concerns. You know, Eagles no, don't really. They're, they're, I'm yeah. sorry, good. No, they do, but the Eagles don't really, other than Sanders, but they have some injury concerns. But their starting corners are back, right? They, the Murphy Bunting and yes. um, Carlton uh, Davis, yes, and Carlton Davis yeah. are back. Yeah. So that that's yeah. good for them. And Antoine Winfield, who didn't play in the first game, yeah, it's true. Didn't play. That's a. Be- there are some guys who didn't play in the first game that Tampa mm-hmm. is getting back that really a scare you. One is Antoine Winfield. Yep. Two is Rob Gronkowski, who has oh, yeah. obviously oh, yeah. seen his role elevated since Antonio oh, Brown and Godwin last week. Out. Oh, last two weeks, seven catches, one hundred and some yeah. yards. And- but he was yeah. unstoppable. I mean, I get it that, that Godwin's not playing. Who's so so important, so explosive, a great football player. Yeah, and AB, who was you know got hurt against the Eagles, he, he they couldn't cover him in that game. But right. look, Gronk's there, and Evans is there. Um, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this matchup, which again we'll talk more about Friday. But um, they do have some injury out. concerns. Those two corners yes. were out that first, and Sherman game, so got I mean, hurt in that game. Yeah. Remember, he got hurt calf injury, right? Either in pregame warmups or very early. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, he got hurt very early. Ross, Ross Cockrell, who's like a fifth corner, had to play in Dean. Had to play a lot. and um, Oh, and then uh, Levante David didn't even play in that game. Kevin Minter, is a, you might remember him from the Cardinals and Bengals, former mm-hmm. second-round pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, look, it, it you're, you're right. M- Mike Edwards is back. He was suspended and also missed some time with an elbow injury. He's back. Uh, Jordan Whitehead's a good football player. He did play in that game. He's a starter, number 33. So they're all, they're all ready. Pierre Desir, you might remember, uh, who was a starter for, uh, years ago for the Colts. Uh, he's there if needed. So they'll, they'll be fine. It's just that the run defense has been bad the last two weeks. And we'll see uh, what the Eagles do to, you know, Sanders is so good. He, he, he's, it's just going to be so hard for them if he's not available. And, and, you know, it's funny in that game where they barely ran it. This is when they were, they were throwing like crazy. He, I mean, he ran for over six yards of carry in that game. So they need him. I mean, he's, the, by the way, he was the only running back to run the ball that game. <laughs> he was. One carry though in the first half, which was right. Oh, people were so pissed. I actually, I was. I was like, "What are you guys yeah. doing, man?" Yeah. How do you think Miles Sanders felt? <laughs> oh, Not real quick, happy. I forget. No, yeah, he shouldn't have been. And then read Peter King. Peter King basically confirmed what we we had, all of us had thought mm-hmm. uh, that Sirianni made a, a decision because he interviewed Sirianni uh, after their game. You know, after their game, and uh, read his his article on NBCSports.com about. Uh, you know, his Monday morning quarterback column about – he ta- covered a lot of ground, but he talks about – he talked to Sirianni, basically confirmed that why they changed. And he basically said in passing it, it, it hurt – it helped Jalen Hurts because it wasn't working. We all know this. He, asking him to throw the ball 35 times a game was not working. Right. So smart coaching is take it out of his hands. He's part of the run game and use that great offensive line. And that was great. And Jeff Stoutland uh, is the man. There's no question. About that. No doubt about it. All right, um, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code ITB to get a 56 to 1 odds deal on any NFL team. Wow. You bet $5, yeah, and win 280 in free bets if your mm. team wins. That's using promo code ITB. This wild card weekend at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. You just got to be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, new customers only, restriction supply. In partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino, see DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And, of course, as we tell you, when you want to get that advantage over DraftKings or whatever sportsbook you use, just download BetQL. It's the only app you'll need to make smart bets. They have a best bet computer model that scans over 350,000 unique bets a year to give you a best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports and the reason why you should place the bet. Their model covers everything from spreads to over-unders and player prop bets. And if you don't use the model, you want to use uh, your own research tools, well, they've got that. From sharp data to line movement to team summaries, lineup and injury breaking news, even the leaderboards to track your success. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store now. Download BetQL. There's also a website called try.betql.co. itb Get started using the discount code ITB at payment checkout and you'll get 25% off their subscription offerings. They also have this cool sportsbook offers page. If you live in one of the eligible states, you can claim free offers upon signing up at one of the many sportsbooks listed. All right, so don't miss out on the chance to beat your sportsbook this football season using BetQL. 
All right, we have some uh, good intel, well, Adam, you do, um, from tape study of this last game. And I, I think it's relevant to go through. I think people want to oh, hear sure. about some of the, the young we're players here. who might be a part of this team's future. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. So, so let's start with um, Jack Anderson, who finally got a chance to play a uh, really interesting guy because they claimed him off the Bills practice squad earlier in the year, if I'm not mistaken, right? They signed him Yeah, they there. signed him off there. Yeah, that this is yeah. – I, I, I got to I, – I, I mean, I'm sure this is Jeff Stoutland uh, – you know, kind of deal where he might, I mean, it might have been the scouting staff too, but obviously Stalin, this doesn't get done unless Stalin approves. And uh, my understanding is he did really well. I mean, certainly wasn't perfect, but hand usage is good. Power is good. Got good, has good feet, better athlete than he's been given credit for. Uh, really good, really good there because again, he could play right tackle. He could play center. He could play guard. You know how they value versatility. I'm not saying other teams don't, but it's just remarkable. The only guy who cannot be cross-trained, well, he just he's not comfortable with it, is Dillard, which does hurt his trade value a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but so I'll tell you what, if Dillard could play right tackle, I will personally guarantee you they'd get a second-round pick at a minimum, and if not a first. But because think. he could only play one position, it hurts. You, I'm yeah. sorry, what would you say? I said I would think. I would agree, yeah. Yeah, they're not I, – I don't – I don't believe they'll get better in a third if they wind up trading him in March, but we'll see. Uh, the Raven Clark looked good. He looked healthy coming off the Achilles. Uh, oh, you remember, he went on the practice squad injury uh, list, injury uh, reserve uh, earlier this season, but he's fine. He looked good. He looked healthy. Mm -hmm. The movement is was good. That was, I was told, that was what you were hoping because he started, and he started right tackle. Anderson yep. started right guard, did a good job. Um, so, as you said earlier, it's great. As you set this up very well, it's really good that they get tape of these guys, that they could they kind of know what they look like on tape. And, and not saying Anderson, if he had to play, it, it, I'm not saying he would be the guy to go in, but the good thing is you go into the spring, know, okay, we've got good tape. Clark showed he's healthy and it should show that he could go in and play against the ones, against the Cowboys. That's the point, folks. Yeah, yeah. They started. No, I they did, and again, they, they ran the ball well, even in the second half. You saw Gainwell run the ball well um, yeah. while, while the, against the Cowboys starters. I mean, I know the game got out of hand, but it, but they weren't trying to win that game, so that's okay. I just thought, in general, the offensive line got a little tired you know, in the second yeah. half, and of course, they're yeah. back up. So, yeah, there was some pressure on um, Gardner Mitchell. So, uh, you right. like the way they, they ran, they they played in the first half competitively. And look, LaRaven Clark becomes important now with, with Jack Driscoll as a swing player out for the year and Brett Toth now also out for the year. And Andre yeah. Dillard, who does not play right tackle, if Lane Johnson were to get hurt, I guess LaRaven Clark is your fill in it right Sure. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think there's yeah, any, sure. uh, any question about that. And he's he's they see him as a left tackle, right tackle. He could play guard because he's done it before, but he's so tall. Mm -hmm. You don't usually like guys six seven playing tackle, uh, excuse me, guard. But um, yeah, you mentioned Gainwell very quickly. He looked really this is the best he looked all year. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't just that great run that he had where he broke out uh, to the right for a touchdown. He just looked really good, explosive. And then Milt Williams, this guy is shame on us for not talking enough this season. He's been tremendous like the last six weeks, and he is here's why he's winning. Like he played DN this game almost exclusively. Because he hasn't played a lot of D and he's been mostly a D tackle so far playing inside. He wins with interior quickness, really good hands and punch. And because he has to because he's got shorter arms. He he wins a lot. He wins a lot. And I understand he played at a lower level of college football, but it does not seem to matter. He's not been overwhelmed by the moment. This is a great job by Tracy Rocker, their D line coach. Give this guy credit. Mm -hmm. And I, for what we're told, he was very involved in this draft pick in terms of pushing for it. You know, some coaches, you know, they say stand on the table for it. I just know for a fact he was very high on this player. Mm. And we know about the Tom Donahoe, one of the, you know, the kid, uh, Lee McNeil, who's a nose tackle for the Lions. But I got to tell you, this has been a great draft pick so far. We'll see how he does. It's the career's not over. It's only one year. He's been well ahead of where they thought he'd be. This is uh, quite the job here. This draft looks really good, by the way, for the Eagles. Yeah, this, this yeah, you, draft. yeah, you love how versatile he is to be able to play the interior line and give you that interior burst that the Eagles have prioritized for quite a long time now. And then you love that fact that he can go to the edge and be a run stopper there. So um, he's done a nice he job. He blows it up. He oh, really he, he blows 
he blows because his first step and his his leverage and punch is so good for a guy. Again, you know, people get sick. We talk about short arms, but it's a major factor uh, when when teams give grades out to players. Mm-hmm. And not every team that we talked to was very high on Williams. They thought he was too raw and this, that, and the other. They could see what they what, what, draft is never about where there are. It has nothing to do with it. It's where what you think. Based on your tape study, okay, this is this is what he looks like now, but it's about the future. Where's he going to be in three years? Where's he going to be in two years? It's not the current season. Where's he going to be? He's mm-hmm. so far ahead of where you thought he would be, uh, your teams did. That, now, we'll see. Again, I don't want to get too crazy here, but he's been so good so far. I I, I didn't think he had a chance in, in hell to be a starter you know, mm-hmm. it, over his four years of his rookie contract. I, I'm going to have to revise that. I, you know, We'll see where um, Fletcher Cox goes and – you know, uh, Javon Hargrave obviously is the starter, but you got to – like, he certainly – I mean, he's been in the rotation for the second half of the season like crazy. Yep. A little he bit in the overta- first half. He's now- overtaken Hassan Ridgeway. He is the Yeah. Third oh, yeah. Right. Ohio. Good point. Oh, yeah. 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 He, he's yeah. Uh, he's a player, man. This is kid's energy. It's a good draft pick, man. Uh, uh, we'll see, you know, again, how year two looks. Uh, but so far, so good. Good job by the Eagles to scout it here. Well, he's got a big test because this Bucks offensive line compared to the offensive lines that they've been facing. I swear, this has been the weirdest schedule. Uh, if you really think about it, the first seven weeks were brutal because they played five teams that are all in the playoffs, right? Kansas City, Tampa, Dallas, um, the Raiders, and uh, there was one more team that I'm missing. Who, who, who blew? They're probably a quarterback. They, oh, San Francisco. San Francisco. So five of their first seven opponents were pretty good teams. I wouldn't call Sam. I don't know that I would call the Raiders a real Super Bowl contender, but they're tough. No, they are tough. Shit. They're they're not yeah. a Super Bowl contender. They're mentally they're tough. In the playoffs, yeah. But they're, tough. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, but so then they had that little. The middle of their schedule is fascinating because that's really the only sample size of like almost where you get a really good evaluation. They played three games to me that stand out: the Chargers, the Broncos, and the Saints, and they go two and one in that span. And then comes just a slate of just really bad teams, to be honest. You know, the Giants, Washington with the COVID situation, injuries twice, uh, the Jets, uh, the, um, who else am I? Um, there's some other team that, that was in there. So it was, I find that those three games to be really significant because they were, and uh, yeah, there were some injuries on both sides. So it's, it's fair, you know, Chargers, Saints and um, Broncos. Those were really the only three games that I find in the 17 game schedule where it was a good way to evaluate the Eagles versus like a comparable type team, you know? Like, yeah, and, some really good strengths in some areas that you get to measure them against. I, I, before we get out of here, the one issue, and we're going to talk way more about this on Friday because I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, there's no way to know what Gannon's going to do. But to me, the whole, the whole game comes down to this. You know you're going to get the best quarterback of all time, and it's not even close. I love Peyton Manning. Tom Brady's a better football player. He's just he. It's close in terms of they're all great, but it's her, yeah. But just looking at where Brady's done physically, he's hung in there. Brady, it's it's Brady, then Manning. You know we talk about a lot of great quarterbacks, but he is the elite, the elite of the elite. He's just. It just shows you don't have to be a great athlete to play the position. You just ha- you have to anticipate, mm-hmm. and it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but you know what? We we learned. I understand in 2017, <laughs> it's a different story. Brady tore their defense apart in the Super yeah. Bowl, but Nick Foles played the game of his life. Doug Peterson coached the game of his life. Their coaches were tremendous. The players were tremendous. This is a little different. This team isn't as talented, but it's going to be fun because no one knows what's going to happen. Vegas six it's eight 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 and a half point game uh, spread. We'll see. Looking forward yeah. to talk about it on Friday. All right, one last thing for you before we go. First, I want to tell yep. everybody to make sure they check out phlsportsnation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan, by the fan, is their motto. So make sure you're checking them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation. We'll pause real quick for a word from our other great sponsors, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. All right, and if you do go into Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You'll get a great deal. Uh, Joe Judge gets fired. The division kind of changes. Um, it would be very yeah. interesting to see, Adam, what happens with this division. Um, are you, were you surprised? Were no. Surprised but Judge? I knew when that ESPN report came out, I'm like, this is too premature. I, I happen to know a lot about what's going on. The players were complaining to the agents about Judge all season. 
Uh, ownership did like him. They didn't really want to do it. Uh, they that's why I think that report came out because they they do they did like him, but the guy was such an embarrassment. I've never seen other coaches rip Joe Judge to me like they've ripped coaches before. It was like unbelievable. He got ripped by so many coaches this season around the NFL because they called him a clown. Mm -hmm. The crap that he pulled in uh, training camp, berating his players in front of the media for 20 minutes. Mm. Uh, this might work in college. These, 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 as some of these coaches called him a fake tough guy, they just thought he's an embarrassment to coaching. I, I think that's so strong. Right. Um, he's a good man. He's from Philly. I wish him luck, but he was overmatched. And these former Belichick guys, they got to be themselves. You can't be somebody you're not. A former Nick Saban guy, this doesn't work. You tr treat, these, treat these guys like, men. these aren't children here. Again, it may work with 18 or 19 year olds, but it's not going to work with grown men. He should know better. Matt Patricia went through the same bullshit, excuse my language, but went through the same crap in Detroit. He yep. did the same crap and it didn't work and he got fired. I mean, you, you got to be better than that. He should know better. But yeah, well. people got to know better on that Belichick tree. Uh, and last question Doug Peterson, he's going to interview, he, you know, he's interviewed Chicago, Jacksonville, yeah. uh, maybe Minnesota. Well, we'll see. He's got to get a job. Where's the best spot for him? It's a possible best job, best spot to me would be Jacksonville, cast space and quarterback. Uh, I was thinking Chicago like, because they're going to have a different GM and maybe somebody. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, okay. Just from a just from a personnel standpoint, in terms of cash mm -hmm. and everything else, yes, yes. I, I you could say Chicago. Uh, John T. Flippo is still there, and he's under contract. By the way, how about that as a quarterback yeah, coach? How about that? Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I but I like Trevor Lawrence. I like all the cast space, and uh, but Trent Baalke is an issue. That's a fair point. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles Intel. Again, Friday morning, that'll be our preview podcast of this uh, wild card game between the Eagles and the Bucks. Big thanks to Hunter Brody. As always, check out his work at broadsmedia.com and uh, his sports talk, uh, his sports, his YouTube channel, Sports Talk with Broads. And as always, as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds.